Hello, Max right here with Vitalik Buterin from, uh, well, from a whole bunch of things in the Bitcoin world, actually. Why don't you start with something that's a little bit about your story? Because um, you've, uh, first of all, I think a really interesting fact is you're only 20 years old and you're doing some of the most amazing things in the Bitcoin world right at the forefront of the very exciting technology. So when did you first find out about uh, the blockchain and, and how did you go from there? Yeah, so I first heard of Bitcoin in March 2011. So the first time I heard about it actually was my dad who who told me about it, but I immediately brushed it off because its uh, use was it has no intrinsic value. But then a couple of weeks later, I heard about it again, and I realized you know this might be something actually significant. So I went on the Bitcoin Talk forums and thought you know okay I'll participate in this thing a bit. So we started looking for some kind of Bitcoin job. So eventually I found a site called Bitcoin Weekly, which is basically a guy his name was uh, Kiba. He was uh, trying to start up a Bitcoin blog and he was paying people five Bitcoins per article for the right articles for the site, which back then was four dollars. So that was my first ever job, paid about a dollar and 30 cents an hour. <laughs> um, so I did that. And then after about a month or so, Akiba actually ran, uh, ran out of money. So I actually came up with this interesting business model where I would write two articles a week. We would publish the first two paragraphs on Bitcoin Talk along with a Bitcoin address. And we would say these two articles are out for ransom. And if people would contribute a total of two Bitcoins to the Bitcoin address, then we would release the articles. And it actually worked. Oh, cool. Yeah. Also, it was cumulatively. Yeah, if, if, as, long as, as long as the community contributed two Bitcoins, then yep. the article would be public. Exactly. And everyone would get it, whether you paid or not. Exactly. It's clever. Yeah. So we're incentivize, incentivizing content production, but we're not actually like paywalling anything away. Right. So yeah, it works really nicely for about two months. But then, uh, so in September, I got another opportunity, which was uh, Mihai Alicia from Romania starting up Bitcoin Magazine. So uh, I was pretty much the first uh, person he contacted to be a writer. So I was uh, in the project right from the start. And we uh, released our first issue uh, in print about nine months later. It's got the somewhat famous anonymous cover now, which has actually even made it into an Italian government report. So I started working in Bitcoin Magazine for uh, about two years. Then uh, meanwhile, I graduated from high school, went to the University of Waterloo for computer science. And then at the start of 2013, Bitcoin started growing really rapidly again. And I realized, you know, this thing is way bigger than I ever thought it would be. Yeah. So I decided that I would uh, quit university and go into Bitcoin projects full time. So I yeah, started uh, traveling the world, going to various different Bitcoin communities. I visited the uh, Free State Project in New Hampshire. Then I went to Amir Taki's uh, famous anarchist compound in Spain, where <laughs> I where I lived. Uh, um, almost uh, pretty much on the floor for about two months, then uh, squat in Milan around Europe, visited Israel. So when I got, got to Israel, what I uh, saw there's a, a set of very interesting projects that some people were working on, which is an area that I'm now referring to as cryptocurrency 2.0. So the idea there is, you know, we have Bitcoin, we have the Bitcoin blockchain, and it's uh, bootstrapped to currency. But can we use the same tools to do more than just money? So covered coins, for example, lets you basically issue your own currencies or your own digital assets on top of Bitcoin. So you would take certain Bitcoins and you and you would cover them. So you would so you would say these Bitcoins now represent shares of this company or these Bitcoins now represent, say, digital baseball cards. And people could trace those covered Bitcoins through the blockchain, just like you could trace normal, normal Bitcoins. Yeah, so that's so then there's also another interesting project called Mastercoin, which is doing a, a sort of protocol that lives on top of the Bitcoin blockchain that lets you do your own currencies, decentralized exchange, name registration, savings wallets, financial uh, der derivatives contracts, and so forth. And at that point, when it, I started working with that, I even joined an effort that would try and make a covered coins, com uh, a covered coins company. And we were talking to pretty big VCs in Silicon Valley. But what I realized is, is that there's, with all these projects, people are getting really hungry for features. People are adding tons and tons of features into the protocols. Like I was reading through th things on Bitcoin Talk where they were releasing, hey, you know, here's a new currency. We've got about 30 features in it. And that, what I realized is, is that, you know, it's ultimately really not the best way, the best way to implement that sort of thing. And you can do it much better. So the way you would do it much better is you generalize it. You say, instead of having features, you have a programming language. 
so you have a currency with a programming language built in and if somebody wants to have a feature they can just write the feature in the programming language and they make a, contra a contract with, with that script code and it would just work so if you want to have if you want to add a decentralized exchange in into the system you would just write the contract dump it in the blockchain and people can use it yeah. so that's what ethereum basically is Oh, very, very cool. So this, I mean, it's it's uh, not unreasonable to say that. So you're, you're providing the tools for people. What you call it Bitcoin 2.0, which I really like that. It's that Bitcoin was the currency implementation of the blockchain technology, and you're providing tools for an infinite number of implementations above and beyond that. Yeah. Awesome. Now you're also involved in this crypto kit. Yes. Can you tell, tell us a little bit about CryptoKit? Sure. So CryptoKit is this project that Anthony DiOrio from uh, from Canada and his partner Steve Duck had come up with in November. So I was still sitting there in San Francisco when they showed it to me for the first time. And they said, hey, you know, we've got a new Bitcoin wallet. And I saw it. It's a Chrome extension. I downloaded it. And... You know, what I realized is, you know, this is a, like, vastly more convenient than anything I've ever seen before. Like, it's just a button on the top right corner of your browser. You can click on it, and then there's just a Bitcoin wallet right there. You can put in an address, you can put in a value, you, and, and you just send. And it even has this a nice feature where if there are Bitcoin addresses on the web page, then CryptoKit automatically detects them, so you can actually just click on the, Bit the Bitcoin address inside of CryptoKit's interface. So it's basically literally like two-click shopping. You get to the get to the checkout page, open up CryptoKit, and then you'll see a list of addresses on the page. You click on the right one, and in fact, for for most of most of the standard Bitcoin payment forms, like that, automatically fills in both the address and the value, and then you just click send. All right. So it's pretty much the most efficient, conven convenient, easy to use payment experience I've ever seen. Yes. Yes. So we've even also uh, released yeah, a couple of videos on that, like how to use CryptoKit with Zynga, how to use CryptoKit with Overstock, amazingly fast. Right. Yeah, and I've actually seen those videos and I've also used CryptoKit and it is phenomenally convenient. Like you say, it's two clicks. Uh, without, you know, if you're buying a digital product, it's just hit, click the button and it pays. Now, what are the, um, something that I was curious about, is the, what's the security features of CryptoKit uh, and, uh, yeah, like so you, there's this wallet and it's in the it's in a browser plugin. That was confusing to me. Yeah. What what are the attack vectors that that is vulnerable to? Okay, so a browser the, uh, the security is uh, actually pretty much equivalent to the security of a desktop application. So the reason there is that a browser has this uh, uh, this concept called local storage, where every single website, every single browser application has access to a certain portion of the browser of the browser's storage in the, in the hard drive, and it can use that to store pretty much any kind of data. Okay. So that's where CryptoKit actually stores all, all of the private keys, all your GPG keys, messages, and so forth. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so just like you would have a wallet.dat file for a Bitcoin QT client or an electrum.dat file on your hard drive for the electrum client, it's exactly the same thing, except instead of a file, it's just this object in browser storage. Okay, interesting. And CryptoKit also uh, incorporates a secure um, NSA proof, let's say, for lack of a better word, um, chat mechanism. Yes, yeah, so we are incorporating GPG, which is an open source implementation of the pretty good privacy PGP protocol invented by Phil Zimmerman in 1991. So this is pretty much the industry standard for ge general message encryption. Yeah. Awesome. And are there any other projects that you've got uh, on the books that you want to talk about? Okay. Yep. There's uh, also pro another project that I'm working with uh, Mihai on, which is called Igora. So Igora is, intends to be sort of like a next generation uh, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency based online marketplace. So something something like eBay, but taking in, into account all of the advantages of Bitcoin. So it's actually incredibly easy to use like you don't even need to navigate between different pages you just click on a product and there's some information there's a QR code right there and like later on we want to uh, also really experiment with uh, some of these different technologies like uh, decentralized marketplaces putting things on on the blockchain uh, to multi-signature escrows so all of these cra crazy ideas that people are implementing around cryptocurrencies, we want to sort of be a testing ground for them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Really keep an eye on this guy. Uh, like I said, one of the young stars of Bitcoin and just lots of exciting things coming out of that man's brain. <laughs> See you soon.